and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to the WBM Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, it's your boy Mert. And you know this is, this is Tapa. And it's your boy Dick Brandon here. And the Mahomes. Guys, do we have an amazing episode lined up for you today. We have somebody you may know, the name is Lord Death from Soul Leader. From, you already know, Crocodile from One Piece. From My Hero Academia, all for one. Guys, we're talking about the man, the myth, the legend, John Swayze! <laughs> guys, it's going to be an amazing episode. We're not going to wait any further, so here we go. You guys ready? Ready. ready. Let's go! Guys, like we said, we have John Swayze. John, go ahead and say hi to the people for us. Hey, everybody. How you doing? It's your old pal, John Swayze, the voice of Crocodile, the voice of All for One, the voice of Lord Death, the Lord Undertaker, and so many more. Hohenheim. Uh, Woo! Wait. Just glad to be here and just want to raise a little glass. Cheers. Hey, oh, boy. boy. Salud, salud, salud. <laughs> All right, John. John, if you don't mind us getting started, I wonder if you mind starting in your early works when you first started. Uh, we did a little bit of a homework. So you started back in the day with Days and Confused. Could you kind of share with us your, your original, uh, what, how you started from the origins? One of your first acting credits. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, uh, my... my uh, very first film that I ever did was a movie I did with Willie Nelson uh, called wow, Harold. Wow, really? Yeah. And uh, was, I was on set for about three weeks and about a week and a half into it, um, started uh, to make my inroads onto the bus. And so <laughs> uh, I'll never forget uh, my buddy Kim came up from Houston and I took him out to the set to meet Willie. And I oh. said, this is my buddy Kim. And Kim grows his own weed. Uh, <laughs> he, he got time to smoke a joint. And Willie goes, you know, John, there's always time to smoke a joint. Like, oh, hey! That's great. That's a, what a story, man. John, you came in with the heavy hitters yeah. already. Sounds like yeah. Willie. Sounds, right. <laughs> Sounds like Willie. Sounds all right. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was a lot of fun, man. But anyway, we, uh, then I worked on, uh, yeah, I did Days of Confused in the 90s. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, then... About 97, uh, started doing anime in Houston at a company called ADV Films, which is now called Sentai Filmworks. And uh, I didn't really know anything about anime. I didn't know what it was. I was like, you know, to me, it was just another acting gig. Oh, wow. okay. Do you recall your first ever uh, try um, audition? Do you, do you recall your first? Oh, Could you share what you sharing with us? It was, it was absolutely horrible. I went, oh. in, I went in an audition. I was already making a living as a voice actor and an actor actor here in Houston. And I was doing pretty well. And uh, I went into audition and they, they said like, okay, so what you do is here's your script, you know, and then uh, you're going to look at the monitor and, and uh, you're going to watch the video. And when you hear, you got headphones on, when you hear the Japanese actor start to talk, that's your cue to start saying the lines on the script. And I was like, okay. And so they said, okay, here we go. And they're like, three, two, one, and record. And I was just like. Oh, <laughs> nothing came like, out. Gone, gone. <laughs> you got you to gotta say the lines. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Let's try it again. Three, two, one, record. And I was like. <laughs> and they said, dude, you got to say the lines. I'm like, when? When do I say them? <laughs> so I, I, they, they were like, thanks a lot. And I, I left. And I sat in my oh. For about 10 minutes, and I went back inside, and I said, guys, I know I can do better. Could I try it again? And they said, yeah. And I had to wait till the end of the day because other people were there. You know, I had to wait till they were done. And uh, I went in, and and literally, they were like, okay, when you hear the Japanese, I said, I got it, man. When I hear the <laughs> I got it this time. Uh, they started, you know, I'm watching three, two, one, record. And the minute I heard the Japanese, I was just like, look at everybody. Come on, we got to run. <laughs> <laughs> shit and and they were like that was great can you come in tuesday <laughs> it's like so oh, wow I, so it worked out and i worked on a show called golden boy we did see that golden boy yeah. played the role of the director in the show i've never seen it but it's an oldie it's an oldie yeah. <laughs> then I, I i worked for uh it's a little risky <laughs> 
for years, for three or four years, four, five, maybe four or five years. And then I started working as a director and mm. they had kind of a, 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 they kind of folded for a little bit and regrouped and I left and was working also at Funimation as an actor and um, doing things like Dragon Ball and Soul Leader and Full Metal and stuff like that. And then uh, uh, I had, I came back to direct and I was a contractor. So I'd come on for a little while and leave, come right. back. Thing. And about in uh, hindsight, did you get an idea it was going to grow this big anime as you got more involved with no, more characters? That, that's what I was about um, to say, um, Chapo. That was I was like, I had no idea it would grow into this. None of us did. I mean, none of it was mm-hmm. such a niche market to begin with, and to see right. how it's grown up into what it is, you know. Um, so now I work at Sentai as a director. Uh, I work full time as a director, voice actor, and I do about forty four to forty five conventions a year. Wow, wow, that's insane, yeah. really. It it has literally has become my career, the whole anime thing. And I love it. I'm very grateful for it. It's 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 amazing. My daughter does it now, she's a voice actor. Um uh and, you know, and it, and you know, it's amazing just to see how prolific it's prolific it has become because now, you know, when when you tell people like I used to go like they go, What what is anime? And I'm like, Well, <laughs> Japanese animation and it's like everything from hello kitty to hello that's right <laughs> and <laughs> yes. and, that's and so uh but now you know it's gotten so popular you know I, you know I'm a big deal at my kid's school uh my I mean hell I'm at my accountant's office right now and his kids love anime and you know, <laughs> it's just it's amazing we, we have the pleasure to admit you in several uh cons <laughs> It's yeah, and you always been so nice. To Thank us. you so much for sharing yeah. your time with us. Every moment that yeah. you, you, you always give us like a five ten minutes and talk to us. So it's always been great meeting you at cons. And you know that being said, John, we're actually super curious. Is there ever a con that you've gone to that you just had like this outrageous interaction with somebody, and it's been like super memorable that's just stayed with you for years? Oh yeah, so I I do a story. Uh, one of the panels I do is called Con Horror Stories, and. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's not it's not about bad conventions. It's just about all the weird shit that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> like I had time I was at a convention and I was signing autographs and this guy comes up in this giant mech cosplay. I can't see his face. Oh. He just comes walking up like gush, gush, gush. <laughs> and he, he leans into me and he goes, I don't care what anybody says, I'm your number one fan, and I'm about to go fanboy on you. Whoa. and i was like what the hell does that mean man <laughs> <laughs> but it's security, it's security? yeah it, it's been uh it's it's a lot of fun you know i've just they've all had moments uh that have you know i i i, I should really uh because when i do this panel it's like a stand-up routine i should i should videotape it and then put it online absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, i watch it special <laughs> that sounds like it's great like it's funny <laughs> Just going back real quick, uh, throughout your experience in voice acting, I'm curious to know, was there ever a character you wish you could go back and maybe change it up or spice things a bit? Every one of, every one of them. Really? Oh. I feel like that's something about an actor, right? Like, you don't always have it down 100%. You always feel like there's room for improvement. Am I wrong? You are not wrong at all, um, Merck. You're, you're, you're spot on, uh, which is why I never watch what I do after I've done oh. it. Oh, uh, I never watch what I do, what I do, because I'll be hypercritical of myself and oh. I, I, I will just go, oh man, you should have done it this way or you should have done it that way. Or, why did you do that? Or even worse, it's like, why did you even hire this actor? I'm awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's, yeah, definitely it's, it's one of those, um, if, if I, I just don't like to do that because I will beat myself up and, you know, there's a thousand ways to do it. You know, you got to pick with one and, and hope that um, it's the right one. But there's a thousand ways to do it. And a and hundred of them are all right. You know, they're all there's not only one right way. Yeah, right. That's true. Now, some of them could be wrong, you know, and you hope you mm. that one. But that's why the director is there to guide you along. So, okay. you know, I, I have seen that from some actors where they comment, you know, if you do a play for man, there you go, join them. <laughs> when when some actors are on stage for for weeks or months doing the same character over and over again, by the time they've done their last 
acting gig or their last attempt at the character, they feel like they've really honed in on something versus voice acting. You don't have very much time The we no. learned by going to your con, the, that anime Houston, that cold reading or a thing where you just get a script and you're like, go. And there's no, nothing to go off of. My, my daughter, uh, we we harvest a lot of actors from universities and the U of H is a very, very big theater school in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, go, go Cougs. Go Cougs. <laughs> uh, and so I had some uh, people come in and uh, my daughter said, oh, hey, so you worked with my dad today. How was it? And the actor was like, well, it was OK, I guess. You know, he didn't really give me a lot. Um, I didn't really know what to do and blah, blah, blah. And, and I, at first I was like, Oh, well, I didn't know. But really, you know, the bottom bottom line is, is that when you do a play, you get a rehearsal period. Right. When you do um, a movie, you might get a table read. You might get some rehearsal time. But with this, there is no rehearsal time. We don't have the luxury of that. You come in, you need to know how to cold read. You need to know. Now, what you may have done, what a lot of actors do now is if they can, they'll watch the show prior in Japanese yeah, so they can get an idea of what their character's doing. But a lot of times if you're doing a, um, especially if you're doing a smaller character, you don't, you're not going to do that, but right. so it's not a place for me to teach you how to do it. I need people that can come in and do it. Oh. And, uh, and so that it makes it difficult if you don't know how to, now there, there's always a learning curve. I'm not saying there's not, but you know, you're not going to sit there and go, okay, now let's think about what this character's motivation is. Let's think about <laughs> gotcha. what want this character, blah, 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 blah. And then you go and roll. And they're like, ah, you know, that was, the gotcha. it's, it's yeah. do it. I mean, do you're, you're dubbing into it's number one, you're dubbing into, into English. So if the character's yelling in Japanese, you're going to yell this line. Mm-hmm. If they're, you know, if they're very somber, you're going to be very somber. And it's a cold read. So I just need you to know how to act. People want to, people that want to do this, that go, man, I, I do a lot of great voices. I can do great impressions, blah, blah, blah. That's all fine and good. And there's a place for that. But it is not in anime and not in right. dub. Yeah. Yeah. Anime wants to be real. It wants to look and sound as real as it can be. And when I say real, I don't mean, gosh, I wish they were using real actors instead of animation. What I mean is it needs to sound authentic and believable. Like it, right. and right. when it does, then you're going to get a good performance. And there are a lot of actors, you know, Lucy Christian, Monica Rial, Colleen Klinkenbeer, Jason Douglas. I mean, and it's it's all of the guys that have been doing this for 20 plus years. You know, yeah. Yeah. Nope. legends. And and you know, sometimes you get actors that come in and want to. Like, oh, I can do anime, and they go, "Hey, everybody, let's go do this." And they, <laughs> it's like, you know, they think this is what the anime voice should sound like. Not every character is Hello Kitty no, or Mickey gotcha. Mouse, right? Exactly. Right. I mean, some shows, yeah. If you're doing a little kitty show, that's fine. But you know, you're doing something like Tunnel to Summer or Eminence in Shadow. It's like, no, I need you to be real. I need you yeah, to, true. you know, sound like you know. And the other thing about that too, and I'm, I know I'm kind of going on about it, but it's it's no, please. You know, one of the things as a voice actor, what makes you, for instance, Merck, what makes you unique is that nobody, and I mean nobody, has a voice exactly like you. So Mm. that's one of your strengths. Use that. Don't go in and go, well, I can sound like John Swayze. Well, we've already got one. You know, that's yeah. Yeah. I don't need need another crocodile. (laughs) I have a crocodile. Give me somebody. And I can tell you from experience, many people are like, we've already got one John Swayze. Lord, we do not want another one. (laughs) (laughs) That's great, man. And you know, that's so interesting, John, because... I, I'm an aspiring voice actor. It's something that I want to do. But I, before I get my feet wet into this whole environment, I, I've i spoken to several voice actors and you guys have, have definitely instilled in me, take acting classes. You can't just go in there and think you're going to do this. What I love was that at, your, at the convention that you hosted for Anime Houston, you actually gave people the opportunity to go and sit down with the director and an audio engineer and do a, a script read, a cold line read. And even the director was nice enough to say, okay, this is your character's motivation. This is already a dubbing. You know the voices are going to match up. Yeah, This is easy. We're handing it to you at this point. Yeah. And some people still struggle. I myself, 
I, I think I did great, sure. But I mean, to somebody else, I did terrible, you know? That's so right. it's the, the time codes are something to worry about. Matching the lip flaps is another thing to worry about. Acting like an actor is, is a whole other thing too. Well, yes, those things are important and 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 they are important. But the most important thing is to act. Sometimes I'll get actors in there and, and they're like, they'll flub a line. They're like, I'm sorry, I was looking for the time code. And it's like, don't, don't do that. Just look at the script. I'll make it fit into the anime. I'll tell you to speed up, slow down, or take a pause here. You look at, it's like, it's like being in an orchestra. And if you're in an orchestra and you're reading off the sheet music and you're playing or whatever it is you're playing, the instrument, you're looking at the sheet music and you're playing. You're not sheet. I mean, I guess you do look up at the conductor, but you're look that sheet music tells you all the information you need to know. True. yeah, but true. you're not you're not playing the sheet music and looking at your other players or am I doing what they're doing? Am I you know it's like yeah. oh. that sheet music and the, and you, you will get every bit of information you need on how to do it right how to do it right. Now, will your fingers do you know? Oh, that says I'm supposed to go here. Can I? Will my fingers know? To- <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different <laughs> the conversation <laughs> mechanism and that's muscle memory and all that. But again. Like I said, with actors that have been doing this a while, we can look at a character and go, oh, I know what that character is. I know exactly what that Mm -hmm. character is like. Because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, uh, that's the main character. He's a young, disheveled high school boy. Uh, This is the girl. She's smarter than he is, very put-offish, very standoffish, but they're going to get together. And, oh, guy's best friend, blonde hair, goofy, a jock maybe. You know, we know what characters are. So you know the archetype. We know the archetype exactly, and and so that makes things easier. You know, um, yeah. I and also you tend to get cast a lot for what your what's in your wheelhouse. Like I'm never going to get the high school student, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> I'm a teacher, the principal, a father, the evil. If, there, if there's a villain, I'll be the villain. You know? <laughs> the best, one of the best villains. Yes, sir. <laughs> Um, so that's, that's, you know, I do get to do some fun stuff sometimes. I mean, like, uh, Lord death was certainly fun undertaker for black Butler. I mean, those, those are not just me. Those, those are voice characterizations and then, you know, silly shows every now and then I'll do, and I get to do a funny voice and, uh, that kind of thing. If it, if it's meant to be silly, right? silly, then you don't want to do that. So right. no, yeah, absolutely. You also did movies, right? Anime movies as well. Is there any other characters or maybe in video games like Borderlands, a character that stood out to you that you, you wish people saw more? I wish, yes. Yes. That's a great question. I wish more people saw the boy and the beast. Oh, I've seen uh, that one. That's, that's a, a classic one. one. Yeah. That's a, really uh, that's a classic one. one. He time traveled to that world. There's a martial art. I love that movie. Right. That's a good one. For Hosada, who's a student of uh, Miyazaki. Mm-hmm. Oh, the like, goat the Steven Spielberg of anime. I mean, it's just, you know, he does brilliant work. It's just gorgeous. And, uh, I, I did, that's one of my favorite roles to do. And I, I wish it would have gotten a broader, I mean, it had a small theatrical run and, uh, yeah. stuff like that. I just wish it would have gotten a bigger audience. That's yeah, you're right. Not a lot of people know it, Yeah, <laughs> but it's a really good movie. John, can I ask you, so you've already said you got two decades in the business at this point. Was there any character that really gave you a challenge? Three decades. I Get it right, bro. Three, Three decades. decades. Along, bro. Get it right. Three bro. decades. <laughs> you've been in this business. Has there been a character so far that's that's really stumped you or given you a challenge, whether it be within vocal range or like the emotional depth of trying to get into that character? Um well, all for one was something that was a little tricky at first, only because when he first started, he didn't have many lines. I mean, it would I would I would go into record and be like, excellent. Very well. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Gotcha. And that was the line, you know, that's all there was. So See once you next year <laughs> <laughs> and he's about to, you know, his, his whole plan is about to come to fruition. So when we start season seven, um, yeah. Yeah. we, uh, we're going to be, um, you know, what I'm trying to say here, it, he's going to have a lot of stuff that comes out. So it's going to be a, a good, a good acting you know, thing for me to do. I'm going to, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but really the only other caveat, uh, to being a voice actor is what is the hardest thing on your voice? And hands mm-hmm. down, that would have to be, uh, uh, Salvador from Borderlands too. Cause everything oh. he did was like this and he had to yell and it was big. 
and I'm just I'm really using the gurgle and the oh. gurgle. It just I, it would just rake ruin my voice, wreak havoc on my voice. He's better like a one liner kind of character, just dropping one line and moving on instead of a whole. Well, and well, it's not that he's a one line character, but when you do video games, you really you do them one line at a time anyway. So okay. when we record when we record an anime, we'll do a whole scene. I'll let the actor run through the whole scene and then then we'll go through the next scene. And then after we're done with the whole episode, we'll go and the engineer will what's called a soft sync and they'll sync everything up and then we'll go back through it again and make sure the lines all fit right. Uh, if we want to change lines, we can change them. They may be short. They may be too long. I want a different read, whatever, but we, it's, it's kind of like just a, uh, almost doing a scratch track first. And then yeah, we like can plug and play. Right. Mm. The actors, a lot of times it's fun for the actors because a lot of times they'll hear it and they'll go, uh, you know what? Let me do that again. I can give you a better read on that line. Mm. But the reason that we do that is because a lot of what we we classify as a foley, or I mean, as excuse me, just a, as a uh, cue, if you will, mm-hmm. a cue is just a line. So a cue, the way we do it, a cue could be, hey, everybody, listen, we've got to get out of here before this place explodes. We don't have much time. So everyone, get your gear. And let's get out. That could be one cue. Mm. Mm. Cue number two is just an effort where you go, so oh. of, you may have you might have 45 cues in an episode, 15 or 20 of them are just you know <laughs> a fight so, or something. Like, oh no, you, don't need, you don't need to you don't need to review that. Just yeah, you know man. again, this goes back to just we want actors that know what they're doing. Just come mm. in, you know what to do, just do it. And then if you if you you know, we write the scripts out kind of like um uh, like a musical score. You know, there's certain denotations like ellipses means a pause. Uh, uh, oh. If it's underlined, it's off screen. If it's italicized, it's a mental thought, you know. So mm. there's different reads and stuff. So you you kind of look at it like that as you're going through it. Um, you know what to do. And the more experience can just rifle through them. And uh, it's, mm. it's great, you know, because then oh. it leaves us a lot of time afterwards to go back in and really massage the lines. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Design. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah. Because that's always something that's kind of like been in the back of my mind of how do they do the uh, ah, you know, yeah, like, the fighting sound. Yeah, yeah, like the getting stabbed by a poison pin as an example. You're like, <laughs> what does that sound effect sound like, you know? Right, right. I mean, you know, not like we have any experience. <laughs> <laughs> right. So another question, if you don't mind me asking, was so you've been an ADR director for for years now. I don't want to even give you a time frame. You've been for years <laughs> now. Get it wrong this time. So um, at this point, do you feel like there's any part of that that's influenced your voice acting in an anime as, as a, for example? Um, absolutely. Um, the, the, the tricky thing about being um, a voice actor and a director is I have to make sure that whatever I'm doing, if I'm voice acting or I'm directing to just wear that hat. Mm. Mm. So okay. if I'm directing, I don't want to micromanage the actor you know, I want them to give me the delivery they want. And mm-hmm. as long as it works, I'm happy with it. Sometimes I might say like, hey, you don't know the context here. I need you to lean on this word a little more because it refers back to something that was said earlier that you're not privy to. Gotcha. Um, an actor, I want to make sure that I don't overstep my bounds towards the director and go, hey, you know what might be better is if we do mm-hmm. it like this. You know, <laughs> yeah, I can see that now, can cause some problems. Now that being said, I, I as a director and as an actor have never been in a situation where uh if the actor says, Hey, can I try that again? I'd like to do something different, um, that I would ever say, No, no, I'm good. Now, <laughs> but I what I would say is like you can, I just want you to know I'm very happy with what you got. But if you think you can beat that, let's try it. Oh, uh, wow, that's okay. But, I like that. Yeah, that's no, we've got one in the can that's good to go. So, gotcha. you know, you got to just go for it. And that's always fun too, you know. Gotcha. But I, I imagine but every I, actor that comes in. I have, I've, I've, uh, being a director um, has helped me. Like, I really like to know the context of the line I'm, you know, what's going on, what happened mm-hmm. prior to this. Right. Gotcha. Because as actors, we go in and we're just going to read our lines. We don't know what happened 20 minutes ago. They're not going to go. Mm-hmm. Now, the director might tell you, okay, so here's kind of how things have gone down, blah, 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 blah. But sometimes they don't. And sometimes they, you know, give you too much information. You're like, I get it. Let's just <laughs> yeah, slow down. 
I, it's not rocket science. Yeah. <laughs> and that goes back to, you know, again, I'm not trying to belittle it. It is a skill set. Mm-hmm. It is something that, um, you know, not everybody can do well. Absolutely. And uh, I'm, but it is, you know, something we've been doing a long time. So we know what we're doing, you know, we have a good you directing, Your directing style must be different for every voice actor that comes in. I'm guessing you get Lucy Christian in, you know, you just let her do her thing. But then there's some voice actors that you got to coach a little bit. Lucy Christian, Monica Rial. I just hit record and I go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know they're going to nail it. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, you, you let them do it. I mean, some you have to handhold a little more than others, and that's fine. I'm not yeah. somebody that needs to come in needs to be the pro. You know, I mean, yeah. like the best they you know we've ever seen. I'm just yeah. saying the ones that have been doing it a long time. You know, we do know what we're doing, and 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 the companies I think would be wise and, and Sentai is very wise about this. Uh, you know, good. Let's use them because they, they bring a lot to the table and, you know, um, and there is something to be said and, and you can see this, you know, uh, didn't used to be this way, but you go to conventions now and it's like, well, maybe we should use that actor because apparently they've got a very big following. And they- yes. yeah. Okay. That's um, new. You know, so, uh, but it, we do like to give people chances. I mean, you know, Always yeah. fun to discover the next great person out there. And that's yeah, exactly people we never know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking about influences and director, when you guys listen to the original audio of how it sounded in Japan, how much influence does it have as a director? And do you have any like leeway to play around with some other thoughts and ideas? Well, for me, it has a tremendous amount of uh, input um, when I listen to the Japanese version of a show. Uh, in fact, as an actor and a director, that's the first thing that I do is I listen to the Japanese actor and I go, okay, who do I know that has a voice somewhere in that range? Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. That's who I'm going to cast or that's who I'm going to bring in for an audition or whatever it is. Um, And then when the actor does get cast, the first thing that we do is go, let's listen to your character in Japanese so we can get an idea of what that character sounds like. We're not trying to mimic it. Right. Japanese. Right. Mm say the line the same way because it's japanese not english but right. if if the characters if the characters way up here in japanese i'm not gonna yeah. do a character like this I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean absolutely yeah so john we also I, I don't mean to cut you off i apologize no. um but we were totally curious so you've done obviously these great shows like uh soul leader and one piece Are, for these in shows in particular, do you have like any cool behind the uh, behind the scenes stories that you can share with us of like making the voice of Crocodile or coming up with the voice of Lord Death, for example? Well, yeah, I mean, going back to Lord Death, that's a great example. Um, when I walked in uh, to audition, um, I was up at Funimation and I walked into audition and I I didn't know anything about the show. They just said you're auditioning for this character named Lord Death, and I was like, oh, great, you know. Lord Death. <laughs> I'm sure Lord Death is like this, you know. <laughs> and I, I started to do the audition, and the director, uh, Zach Bolton, said, whoa, 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 stop. Listen to the Japanese actor. Listen to what he's doing. Uh-huh. Like, oh, oh, he's way up here like this. I see. That's much better. Yes. Yeah. That was, that was a, a very, that's where I kind of learned that lesson all those years ago. And even when I got the job and we went in to start recording, uh, we recorded for about 20 minutes. And about 20 minutes in, Zach said, you know what? I'm going to stop you. Where you are with the voice right now, where it has evolved to in this 20 minutes is where it needs to be. We're going to start over and just go back. Wow. Scratch. Stone, you know. So Mm -hmm. that was a cool experience. I really enjoyed that. And and we've done the same thing. Uh, You know, voices will always evolve a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I, when I, when I go to conventions, they go, do crocodile. I'm like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> and they go, ah, ah, ah like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but then I go listen to a crocodile recording 10 years ago, and I'm like, that's oh. that's not what I sounded like just now. You know, it's it's different. Um, yeah. I've got fatter, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it, it is, a, you know, there is an evolution. And there's an evolution every voice actor. I mean, you mm-hmm. listen to Homer Simpson from The Simpsons when Homer Simpson started out and what Homer Simpson is today. And Dan Castellanata is, I mean, it's like over here now. 
Right. It, it's still there. You can hear the original in what's done now, but it's it's cleaner. It's crisper. It's, you know, not quite as chunky and lunky. Um, True. Yeah. But still, True. you know, it's it's part of the evolution of it. And that's that's a natural progression. Yeah, because you're t- you're totally right. I I go back and I I'm I'm rewatching one piece with one of my friends, and we they, we got to the Alabasta saga at this point for us. And I hear you as crocodile here, and then I've already seen Impel Down. Um, so when I hear you coming out of Hey there, Straw Hat, like that that Straw Hat that you give is so iconic because I think to the Japanese how that Mugiwara, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm like, that is the progression of your voices made over those years, and it's like. I didn't think about it at first, but now when you say it, I'm like, damn, he did grow over that time. That's so mm. amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, next thing you want to hop into, John, if that's all right uh, with yes. you, is Eminence and Shadows. Eminence and Shadows. <laughs> we got a chance to meet Olivia, Annie, and Adam Gibbs. We actually met Adam Gibbs this past weekend at Bedrock City Con. Yeah. Oh, cool. Was, cool, cool. Yeah, he was he was awesome to talk to them. He he loved to keep guy. I am Atomica. Oh man, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Why would I run? You know, yeah. these lines. <laughs> I, I um, love Prince and Shadow. Um, it is it is one of my the most favorite things I've ever and we're still in season two, but it's just season two season came out. It yes. just came out, man. I, I love that show. It's it's so cool. You know it's such a great story. And I feel like uh, you made the voices like like all the acting is so authentic. Absolutely. Yeah. Not only is it like action based comedy, like you hit everything. Like I'm laughing just as much as I'm like invested in the character development. Yes. Yeah, it's it's kind of got a bit of a Deadpool vibe, I think. You know, he's yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. he's not 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 quite as unhinged. <laughs> but it's got it's, a, it's like uh Sid is so cocky and he knows mm. he's gonna win the battle. And right. it's just, yeah. So it's just everything he's he's just toying with everything, you know. I mean, it's like a it's like a playland, and he's God. He created this world, you know. Yeah, it's true. absolutely. It's a really really interesting, but it, it's been a joy to uh, direct, and it's been a real joy to see it unfold. Um, we've uh, we've recorded about half of season two, and we're yeah. getting it out. But it's uh, it's really cool to see how it's unfolding. And yeah. we again, we love that you guys are getting the chance to do a simulcast. That's huge news, you know. Simuldub. Simuldub. I apologize. Yes, yeah, simuldub. That's great, man. How much more complex is that compared to like the original works? Uh, well, I mean, any uh, any uh, thing we can do that, like simuldubs are are a little tougher only because there's a schedule issue. There's like we got to get mm-hmm. it done because it's going to drop. You know, this is dropping here. We got to be there. Right, they dropped, right. dropped today. Today's Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> so two yeah. dropped today. Yes. Uh, if you, if you know, like I'm doing another show right now called uh, Love's Love Flops. Love Flops. Okay. <laughs> it's a fun little show, but we're doing all 12 episodes, and then it'll drop. You know, where you can. Oh, wow, very cool. So it's yeah. it's easier on the schedule, uh, but they're you know they're all fun, and and again, when you get the right people involved, it's all easy breezy. Can I ask you, John, was was the Eminence of Shadow something that just came across your desk, something that you heard about? You're like, hey, I'm interested in this. Let me get a, a stab at it. Like, how does that work for you out of curiosity? Uh, no, we usually just get handed a show. Um, oh, wow. I didn't so know. it's really cool, though, that you, you... I didn't know anything about it. I didn't, you know, um, I just was, here, we're doing this show. I'm like, okay. So I went, <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's a great thing that it was something that you really love and that you fell in love with and that you're really proud of. As a matter of fact, we we're wondering, would you mind if we went ahead and show the, the teaser trailer for season two? Yeah, go for it. Okay, let's bring it up. All right, guys, here's Eminence of Sad- Shadow season two. Season two. The lawless city is even more of a dump than I imagined. A town drenched in blood and slaughter. It's perfect. They've already announced that this time the boss is a super powerful vampire. It's a pretty rare opportunity. Maybe I'll make an extra flashy entrance. It smells like a nice big battle. You can go straight to hell, she fox. (laughs) You truly are a thorn in my side. So let's remain on friendly terms. It's time for us to paint the world in blood once more. My target is the Blood Queen Elizabeth. To find her, I must go to the Crimson Tower. Then we're heading in the same direction. I'm coming for you, Sid! Have 
very little time remaining. Would you be so kind as to tell me your name? The frenzy has begun. I got high that. Yeah. Oh yeah, we gotta hide that. We gotta hide that. Yeah. <laughs> Just as much as a cup of coffee, right, John? Just as much as a cup of coffee. One cup of coffee. <laughs> That's, That's it. Sure. That's it. One shot of whiskey. I, I, <laughs> one of the voices, of it, the British guy. Uh, uh, I don't know if you heard it in the trailer, but when you you talk about voices, it's like you know who do you match up with what actors to what characters mm-hmm. and stuff. And mm-hmm. every now and then you run across a character and you're like, you know, I've got an actor who's from England. He can, he can lose his British accent, but, and I, it doesn't call for one, but you know, it would really be badass if he had a British accent. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. That's very cool, man. So I, 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 Nikki Sanders is the actor that I use for that. And it was, it was like, yeah, that's pretty badass dude. And even QC was like, uh, why does your actor have a British accent? I'm like, because it's cool as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, damn it? Why awesome. not? <laughs> yeah. The Brits are our friends. He's a vampire. He has to be British. Exactly. He's lived forever at this point, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting to see season two, all these new characters that are coming in. You, I mean, you got to direct so many new voice actors in season two. Oh, yeah. And I get daily uh, emails Hey, I don't know how much Eminence and Shadow is left, but I'd love to audition for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that happens a lot. That's being cool. a director, you got a lot of pull, huh? You, you must get people like, "Hey, John." And that, <laughs> that tells you you're doing something right, I guess. You know, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we love the show, it's, and it's exciting to see that Claire Cagano is going to get like. It seems like she's going to get a bigger role, so that looks cool. Yeah, Claire, and I think Alexia is going to come back and do something. Ooh. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I don't, I, I could, I, I don't know. I'm just saying there, there's Alexia, Claire. There's a couple of them that have, okay, or, and uh, uh, oh god, what's her name? Six six six. The the Ooh, uh, a rose, rose, Princess Rose, um, Princess Rose. They've all kind of gone off for a little bit, and it's like, well, are they going to come back and do something big, or you know, what's going to happen? So, yes, mm. I love that. It's so exciting to see what the season happens. Will there be a season three? I don't know. <laughs> Let me hear it here first, yes, folks. Right, hear here first. We want a season three. <laughs> they make it happen. We hope that you get to see it. There's enough story. The light novels. I mean, you had, there's a lot more story in the light novels. Absolutely. You never know. I would love it if it turned into our shonen, you know? Oh. oh. Yo, that is yeah. so cool. That's a great idea. He's picking yeah. up. I, yeah. I love it. You've never. Um, we were talking about that the other day and we just, we've never at that, uh, Sentai, we've never really had one. We we've, we've, I mean, maybe mm-hmm. Evangelion, but Evangelion went to other companies too. So it's not, yeah. that we did. Um, but, uh, that would be cool, man. I mean, that's, you know, that's the kind of thing that once you get that thing going it, it then it, cause it, w- once you have a show like that, I mean, you get into a season four, season five, right? Uh, season four, season five, then you have more chances to reach a huge audience because then they're going to all go back to season one and go, yeah, yeah, yeah you absolutely. Gotta, you got to rewatch the whole thing. That's yeah. Right. Hey, I heard about it by season three. I'll go back to yeah. season one and, and one. Yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. That would be, Oh, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're rooting for you, John. Yeah. Like we said, I'm one of those. He's the one that got me into a medicine shadow. This so guy, like, I need to catch up. Yeah. So yes. I knocked it all in. So it, it does happen. It does happen. Do you all read the manga? I read the light novel. The light novel, got light novel, not manga. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the bottom line is: look, it, it's, it boils down to this: is there content, and does it make the company in Japan money? Right. If, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. If the answer to those questions are yes, they will probably make yeah. it again, or make more. I can yeah. see. I can see them making more. One hundred. I mean, the quality of the show is so good. Yeah. You yeah. Know, you can see it. Absolutely. If as long as you can, man. There's no need to jump off the board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on Well, you know, just pushing forward a little bit, John, we are really excited that we have another con of yours that's coming up very, very soon. November 20th. Oh, Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving weekend. Anime Dallas. Anime Dallas. <laughs> Anime Dallas. You bet. Thanksgiving weekend. We're going to have a great lineup again. We're going to have uh, 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 Billy West will be there again. We're going to have the girls from Avatar. We will have um, uh, that'll be Jenny Kwan, Olivia Hack, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, oh God! What's her name? Another character: Suki, Tai Lee, and May. Yeah, yeah, she both. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a funny name. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, too many of these shots. Anyway, if you just mouth it, John. We'll, we'll we'll put it in and post. We'll add it in post. We'll add it in post. <laughs> and we're gonna have a few others. It's gonna be Emmy Lowe is gonna be there. Um, Caitlin Barr, a couple of local Dallas actors. We're gonna have Bill Butts. Um, and I'm hoping I'm hoping to get Todd Haverkorn. Uh, we'll see. Oh, wow. So, um, but yeah, it should be a fun show, man. That's a that's a that's a good show. That's sort of the mothership show of our Anime Texas shows. Uh, we have Anime Dallas and Anime Houston. Yeah. Anime Dallas is is bigger. It's older. Um, Dallas has a very very vibrant anime community. Yes, yeah. it's something that we're very happy with. But we're trying to build that up in Houston as well. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a great show. So. Uh, and the great thing about it is right now, I think till this next week, tickets are only $20 for the weekend. So that's right yes. here, folks. I love that. That's something you considered the fans more than anything else. I love what you said at uh, anime Houston of we're not trying to break the bank to get you guys to come in here. We know that things you want to buy. Keep it affordable. Yeah. And you, and the VIP was really worth it, man. You made that experience like, oh, you know, great. worth it. Yeah. It that's really was John. We're going to try to keep it up try to, uh, you know, keep growing and, my goal really is to be, if we could be about a 10,000 attendee convention, I'd be super happy. And I don't, oh, we're I mean, shooting for 20 for you, John. Well, you know, I, <laughs> thank you for that. I appreciate that. But I'm just <laughs> at 10,000. That's a good show. It's not sure. unmanageable, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, 20,000, my God, we couldn't be at the same hotel we're at. 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, we really enjoyed our time. Again, the, the voice acting booth. We learned so much more about the anime business on the back end as far as what the audio engineers yeah. do, what the cold calling is, some exercises you can even do. If you think you want to be a voice actor, these are some things you can try out. I love that because I don't feel like that side of the business gets enough love or it doesn't get enough shine on it. And I'm so happy that you did that because, like I said, for me being an aspiring voice actor, these things were all I, I took it in like a sponge, man. So, yeah. again, I, I, I love that you've done that, and yes. I continue to do more of it because it's something that everybody can walk away from. And, and I, as a civilian, I, I don't <laughs> – I, I appreciate y'all, like, everything that it takes to become a voice actor because you guys presented to me what it really takes, uh, seeing, you know, the action behind the scenes. I maybe appreciate it even more as, as, a, as an audience member. Like, thank you so much for all this. Yeah, you can see that it's not as easy as it looks. Facts. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I've got a meeting tonight about it. It, it takes a, it takes a village. <laughs> very, very true. Do y'all want to bring up uh, before we finish it? Uh, if you want to talk about Tunnel to Summer, the movie that's coming out, it's going to have a theatrical release that's November right. 3rd. It is going to have a theatrical release. They're going to debut it at uh, New York City Comic Con this weekend. Um, that's right. Uh, Gabriel Rogojo and Patricia Duran are going to be up in New York. Uh, pimping it out, and um, I, <laughs> it's uh, it, it it's it's a beautiful, beautiful movie, and I, I love it every much as I do Eminence and Shadow. Those are my two, uh, for me, director wise. Those are my two uh, jewels in the crown. Um, they're just they're beautifully done, beautifully animated, brilliantly acted, and uh, I just I, I just love them to death. So I'm very very excited about that. I think uh, I'm not exactly sure where to get tickets for the theatrical run here in Houston or wherever your viewers might be. But um, if you go to highdive.com, I'm sure you can, they'll have information on it. So check it out. And while you're there, sign up. It's only $4.99 a month. That's right. Just a cup of coffee. That's coffee. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys did something special when recording. Cheaper than this shot of whiskey. Hot damn. He's right, boys. Cheers. <laughs> Y'all did something special when recording the uh, because uh, you got the main, two main characters to come in and record lines at the same time? Yeah. What we did was uh, we we had um, we had recorded everything and we, we reviewed it and we weren't quite happy with it. It wasn't their performances or anything like that. It was just some of the writing was a little clunky. And that's one of the mm -hmm. downsides when you record out of sequence. You don't get to hear everything, you know. And so once we heard everything kind of put together and in place, uh, we decided, you know what, let's let's go back and revisit some of these lines. And we went through about a third of it and changed it. And then but th wow. at that case, we had a lot of actors come back in and redo their lines. But for the two main characters, um, we uh, we had them come in the same day and just sit in the studio. So a lot of their scenes were together. So it'd be like, mm. she talks, he talks, she talks, he talks like that. So we'd take a scene and I'd send Gabriel into the booth. He'd do his lines. We'd record them, put them in place. Then she would go in 
and record reacting to him, not worrying about does it fit or anything like that. Just don't worry about reading it. Listen to what he says and react to that. Mm. Wow. You're like, and if you if you change the wording or whatever, I don't care. I want it to sound real and believable. And oh, then so cool. Then we'd go in. Then the next scene, it'd be like, all right, you're already in there, Patricia. You stay in and now you do it. And then Gabriel, you go in and, you know, so it was, it was a fun process for sure, man. Very unique, very different, but a fun process nonetheless. Man, that's cool. That is amazing. Yeah. And it's released, what, this November 3rd? 3rd. November 3rd. Make sure you guys can look so out for that. make sure you guys yeah. keep an eye out for that. Um, Check it out on the high guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, before we wrap up this interview, would you mind telling the people where they can find you on your social media? You bet, guys. You can find me on Instagram uh facebook and whatever this is i don't know yes <laughs> uh and uh I'm, I'm on i think i have a tiktok uh, you do that's right you you follow you. 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 Yeah. i follow tons of people i don't really know what i'm doing i have to <laughs> <laughs> so do we <laughs> all love all love well, John, thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. Again, guys, make sure you guys keep an eye out. The Eminence of Shadow Season 2 is already dropping. It comes out on Wednesdays. Make sure you find it. Yes, yeah, sub and the same day. Same day, baby. <laughs> Catch it where? On Bye, High Dive. That's right. Guys, this has been the WBM Podcast. This has been your boy, Mark. Make sure you guys are following us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all at WBM underscore podcast. Once again, this is Chapo. John, thank you so much. You can follow up on Amazon Music, Spotify, all that jazz. Salud. <laughs> and it's your boy, Dick in the man. In the mix. As always, check out our website, WBMpodcast.com. And again, huge shout out and thank you to John Swayze for coming on and spending us this time with us. Thank you, John. All right, guys. Well, we'll catch you on the next one. We'll see you next time. We out here. Peace. <laughs> I left the tequila downstairs. <laughs>